Hello students, I am Dr. Aruna Mohan from Delhi University and today I am discussing certain aspects of implantation. In previous sessions, we have discussed about reproductive cycle, about ovulation and also about fertilization and you are aware of the fact that fertilization takes place in the initial one third of fallopian tube and you know the reason for this because lifespan of ova is only two days. Now this fertilized egg now called zygote will move down to the fallopian tube reaching to uterus and once it reaches uterus implantation will take place. Before that once fertilization has taken place in fallopian tube the division begins immediately while moving through oviduct to uterus it is undergoing division continuously and the first division of a fertilized egg means zygote is cleavage you can see cleavage in the slide this is the line which indicates the first division this will divide zygote into two cells Normally, the division is such that cells remain attached and then there will be second division horizontal to it and two will become four and division will go on. But sometimes it happens so that the first division which is technically called cleavage, it becomes very huge or very big with the pressure or stress is there more on the zygote then what happens the zygote divides into two halves but they separate from each other the division becomes very distinct in this case this will result into identical twins so now you know the reason why identical twins are formed and how they are formed this is a point cleavage when cleavage becomes very prominent and two cells separate from each other now both will develop two babies separately but they will be identical in genetic makeup. By any chance if two ovas are released, two follicles became direction follicle. In that case both the ovas will be fertilized and two zygotes will be formed. In that case it will be non-identical twins. Coming back to cleavage. So that is the first division, it is vertical and second division is horizontal to this first division resulting into 4 and then the division goes on 8, 16, 32. Till this stage it is a ball of cells and then a cavity appears in the center called blastocele and hence the structure is called blastula. Much before this, this fertilized egg zygote is moving down from fallopian tube to uterus and dividing 1 to 2 2 to 4 dividing means within it not separating out the cells so it is a ball of cell moving down and by the time it reaches uterus it is either 16 cell stage or 32 cell stage and the point where it touches first it is implanted point in the uterine endometrium normally since it is coming from oviduct it will touch sides of the uterus. Also you can see blastomeres which are cells after division which are also shown on the same slide. So you know about the cleavage and also you know about blastomeres and this automatically begins after fertilization. It is set in, the motion is set in into the fertilized egg. You can see transport of ovum in this case the fertilized egg in the fallopian tube if it was only ovum not fertilized then it won't move beyond initial one third of fallopian tube because it will die after 48 hours but if it is fertilized it is going to move bit by bit 
first day, some movement, second day, third day, fourth day and in six to seven days it will reach the uterus in the uterine endometrium where it will get implanted. The point where it touched the endometrium of uterus, at that point the placenta will be formed and at that time a cord will also be formed and that cord will be a bridge between mother and the fetus. It will be used to supply nutrition and oxygen to fetus and also it will be utilized to carry back the excretory matter and the carbon dioxide from fetus to mother. So finally these systems will be taken care of by mother's systems which are under more pressure when baby is in the womb. Other word for uterus is womb. Zygote when it undergoes division it is called morula because it resembles mulberry. It has no cavity. Gradually this morula grows to higher stages and then blastula is formed. Blastula has a cavity called blastocele. From blastula will come or develop gastrula. Gastra has cavity called gastrocele or archenteron. Gastrula has lips, the dorsal lip, through which the cells can flow from outside to inside. Outside cells are ectoderm kind. The one which are moving in will form the endoderm and then a mesoderm will be secreted between the two. You know that our body has ectoderm, endoderm and mesoderm and all the organs which we have are derived from one of the three membranes. So all the three membranes are very important and they are formed at the time of gastrula formation. Gastrula is important because this is a point where differentiation will take place. What differentiation? That which cell will make what? When ovum was there, it was half cell haploid and when zygote was there, it was full cell diploid but one cell. Now this was capable of making all the organs of your body. It is called omnipotent omnipotency was there. But now by the time after dividing into so many cells it reaches gastrula stage now differentiation needs to be there. So that cells know that this particular cell should make nose or this cell will make eye or this cell will make heart or this cell will make kidney. So that differentiation occurs at the gastrula stage. And once differentiation has taken place, then omnipotency disappears. That is why after we grow fully and if we lose some part from our body, it is not possible to, for body to grow it. But there are now techniques using stem cells to grow the tissues. Before I go further, I would like to tell you, dear students, about the stem cells. Stem cells are the cord cells which are omnipotent and they can give rise to all the tissues. So if stem cells are preserved at the time of birth of baby and later on one finds that baby needs this particular organ to be formed which is not fully formed in his body, then his own stem cells can be used for the purpose. Or these stem cells can also be used for brother or sister of this child in case of need. So stem cells are also omnipotent and this becomes boon for the child who is lacking on some or the other organ. The inner cell mass which is important for differentiation is there at the developing stage and this trough of blast layer gets attached to endometrium. What I am trying to explain here is the trophoblast layer is important. It has inner mass and outer layer is trophoblast layer 
and that is instrumental in getting attached to the uterine endometrium at the time of implantation. And once implantation has taken place, all other events will follow formation of placenta, formation of cord, maintenance of blood supply, arteries, veins, everything will follow. But this point is very important. If this had not taken place, nothing else will move and this 32 stage cell stage embryo will just be thrown off. Chorionic villi, what do I mean by this? You have heard about amnion, chorion, allantois. These are the layers which we find around the baby and also around the placenta or around the cord. In case of human female, the placenta is having chorionic villi. There are so many types of placenta depending upon which layer is present and which layer is not present. We are not going in details of placenta. This is enough for you to know that in human female, placenta has chorionic villi. Villi means increasing the surface area. Placenta is the bridge between mother and fetus and this releases a hormone called HCG, human chorionic goitotrophin hormone. A little detail about this. Since placenta is secreting a hormone HCG, that means it is an endocrine gland. But we don't have placenta all the time in our body, only during pregnancy. That means it is a temporary endocrine gland. And placenta is looking after pregnancy only for six months, that is second trimester and third trimester. In human female, the pregnancy period, which is also called gestation period, is of nine months, which is divided into three trimesters. The first trimester of pregnancy is looked after by corpus luteum because corpus luteum is living for 90 days. Second and third trimester, that is six months, are looked after by placenta. So placenta has fixed lifespan of six months. So we can say that placenta is temporary endocrine gland. Endocrine because it is releasing hormone, HCG, and temporary because it has lifespan six months and it is important. Because it has fixed lifespan, it will start deteriorating after six months. Now baby will not get supply of oxygen and glucose that nicely. So baby will try to struggle and come out for food and respiration. If placenta did not disintegrate, then baby will never come out. Is that the situation which should happen? No. So placenta having fixed lifespan is also boon as far as delivery of the baby is concerned. SCG looks after the pregnancy in these six months. Estrogen, progesterone, you already know. HPL, human placental lactogen, which will now give the message to breast that start producing milk. And relaxin will relax uterus at the time of childbirth. The uterine, the vagina, the uterine opening should relax and become slightly bigger so that baby can pass through and that is parturition or childbirth and this takes place in the end of ninth month with the help of hormone relaxin oxytocin and many other hormones which are used at this point of time with this we come to the end of this session thank you mm -hmm.